Hi there booktube, it's Eleanor here and today I'm going to do something that's quite new for me so uh, be gentle. I am going to do my first proper review video. I'm going to do reviews of The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath and Bell Zar by Meg Wallitzer. I read these two back to back um, because I've heard that that's a good way to do it and I wanted to share my thoughts with you. I've been thinking about doing more in-depth reviews because um, I want to start considering the books that I'm reading a little bit more and thinking about them myself. So um, this is a first attempt, so if you've got any comments, anything you think I should sort of include in that or any hints and tips, definitely let me know. I won't be offended, I'd just love to sort of get your views on this. But uh, let's get started with the reviews. These won't have spoilers in them, uh, they're just going to be my thoughts on the books and a little bit of information. So the first book I read was The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. The first sentence of this book just had me hooked, so I'm going to read you what the first sentence was. It was a queer, sultry summer, the summer they electrocuted the Rosenbergs, and I didn't know what I was doing in New York. So firstly, electrocution in the first sentence, and then New York, which I just love. So I was hooked. This book was published in 1963. It's 280 pages long and it's a semi-autobiographical novel, but it has all the names and places changed. Plath uh, committed suicide a month after the UK publication date when she was just 30 years old. The novel, which is a first person narrative, uses flashbacks in it in order for us to see what has happened before and what has got her to this stage that she's at now. We learn more about Esther, who is our main protagonist, who is based on Sylvia Plath herself, and it's about her college years. Currently, as the story starts, she is in New York on an internship that she has got through uh, college at a New York magazine. She's on a scholarship to, through college and she has won this chance among uh, a number of other girls who have all been put up in a women-only hotel in New York and are attending a lot of functions and parties and learning the ropes of working in mag magazine publishing. She has made friends with uh, some of the girls that she is living with, including Doreen, who is a bit of a racy, adventurous friend. And then there's also the more homely, down to earth, Betsy, who is a bit of a goody two shoes. Perhaps this is an indication of the two sides of Sylvia Plath's personality, I'm not sure, but she's picked two very different people that she's friends with, and I think she's torn between which self she wants to be. I've always been intimidated to read The Pell Jar. For some reason, because it was on a lot of people's lists when I was at school as um, school reads, it wasn't actually one that I was picked to read, but I always thought, I don't know what it is, like if somebody's read it at school or it's been on a school list, I always think, oh, that's gonna be really hard going, it's gonna be really difficult. And that's often not the case. You know, with To Kill a Mockingbird, I was put off for years reading it, and when I read it, it's one of the, my favorite books ever. So uh, I was really pleasantly surprised with this. I thought it was going to be intimidating, but it was really easy to read. It was really engaging and it was just such a really powerful story. The reason that I picked it up was because I had heard about this book, Belzar, which is a YA novel that I wanted to read. And I had heard from people that it was good to have read The Bell Jar first. So I'm really pleased for that. That's pushed me to read The Bell Jar. So uh, thank you, Meg Wallets. <laughs> Um, I gave this book four stars and I really, really enjoyed it. It's a relatively short book with only 280 pages and it is covering themes such as depression and suicide and attempted suicide and disillusionment. So if those are triggers for you, then you may not want to read this book. I'd recommend this book to anyone that's interested in Sylvia Plath's life, as it is a semi-autobiographical novel, or interested in uh, books on depression and... Um, mental health, especially in a more historical setting. This is based in 1950s, so there is a lot of unusual therapies being used at the time, like electroshock treatment, which I just think sounds horrific and why anyone would ever have thought that was a good idea, I don't know. It's an honest and to the point look at one woman's inner turmoil and struggle with mental health. I read this book very quickly, probably in about a day, and I really enjoyed it and then moved straight on to Meg Wollitzer's um, The Bell Jar. In this book, we tie The Bell Jar with a class project. A young girl called Jam, or Jamaica, 
it has been sent to a residential school for children that ha are having issues or have had traumas and are needing some therapy as well as um, classes. She has picked as part of a special English class with only a small group of students. They're all handpicked but they're not sure why they're picked and the teacher Mrs Quell gives them all a journal to write in. The um, idea of this class apparently is that every year a small group are chosen and they study just one author during this class and the author that Mrs Quell has chosen, can you guess, is Sylvia Plas the Bell Jar. So this is where this part of the book ties in. So something that I found really interesting I'm going to read to you now that came from the book, a bit of information which also tied back to the Bell Jar which I really liked, was um, Mrs Quell's telling the class a little bit about the um, the bell jar in terms of what a bell jar is and I actually didn't know and she says a bell jar anything put in a bell jar is isolated from the rest of the world in a little vacuum so the title of Sylvia Plath's uh, book is probably metaphoric for her own feelings of isolation which led to her suicide at the age of 30. So I thought that was interesting about the what a bell jar is and this sort of idea of a vacuum and I know I don't suffer from depression myself but I have been depressed at times and that feeling of isolation and in your own bubble and um, you know in your own world and and so to speak and being cut off from everybody else can be very traumatic. I gave this book also four stars and the reason that I didn't feel I could give it five stars because I did really enjoy the book was I was a little disappointed with Jam's story once I found out what it was. I'm not going to say any more than that because I don't want to spoil it for anyone but I was a little bit disappointed in her story. However that did draw on the teenage psyche and the problems teenagers face and how things feel for them and how um, events are heightened and take on a lot more importance than they might do as you mature and you become an adult and you realise that things maybe aren't quite as traumatic as you thought. That doesn't, that is not belittling however those feelings as a teenager because those feelings are real and those feelings are things that teenagers feel it's just that with hindsight as you get older I think some things seem less important um, and some things don't but yeah I think it was a very interesting look into this particular point in um, these teenagers lives. I felt the characters had enough depth to them to make them feel believable and interesting. I would definitely recommend reading The Bell Jar first. I really thought that added a lot for me in terms of what I understood of the story and the storyline. It's a YA book and I would say triggers possibly if you have triggers to kidnapping mental health issues and depression then again maybe this isn't a book that you want to read. One area where I did feel could have been developed a little better was at the end we learned a little bit more about Mrs Quell and her background and I really feel like that was quite rushed and I would have liked a bit more of an in-depth look into her life. But overall I really enjoyed these books, I really enjoyed reading them together, they're quite short books so I really thought they were um, you know a good a good two books to put together and read one after the other in in a short sort of space of time and yeah I, I thoroughly enjoyed them both and again both four stars they weren't books that I was like oh my god they were brilliant you must read them now but they were definitely worthy of four stars very good reads and yeah I would recommend them so I hope that my first review is okay and that you found it interesting and let me know in the comments below if you've read these and your thoughts on them and uh, I will be doing a few more of these if people like them and and want me to so uh, yeah thanks for watching I hope this hasn't been too long and uh, I look forward to speaking to you soon bye for now booktube